My name is Ramin Karamu and I'm playing the Phantom in Love Never Dies. How does the Phantom and the Phantom of the Opera differ from the Phantom in Love Never Dies? Well, you know, there's the obvious uh, social changes. You know, he's no longer hiding and living underground. He's completely flipped and he's living above ground. He's celebrated for his, you know, his work on Coney Island. You know, how is he living now without his muse and trying to get her back? You know, we see him have her and his muse and what becomes his love all through the first one and then he loses Christine and then how does he deal with that over the next 10 years and you know all the, that and also you know coming out of darkness into light those are ma major socially that that's a pretty major affecting thing on the character what's well, one thing I hate about the character of the Phantom and one thing I love about him well obviously what I hate about him is poor guy killed. So uh, murder is probably a no-no and I can't find myself to like that. Although I empathize with him, I understand. Um, what I love about him, uh, I just love his passion. What traits of the Phantom's personality are similar to mine? Well, um, I, I think the main one that I really feel parallel with is just his uh, passion. Also being a perfectionist, the Phantom um, and I share that trait, you know, when is enough enough, that sort of thing, you know, you keep pushing yourself, you keep trying to get it right, which in its way, it's, it's not actually a good thing. But I think th those are the two main ones that, you know, struck a chord with me when I first saw the show and still do now, in the original and in Love Never Dies. How did I feel when I first got the call that I was going to play my dream role as the Phantom? It was... It, uh, even now when I think of it, it's really surreal and it's, it was just, you can't get a better phone call than that, you know, and it's, it's sort of like, I remember it hit me too, you think, okay, <laughs> now, now's the time to do what you always wanted to do. So it was just euphoric, you know, as surreal as it was euphoric, but it was um, one of the best days of my life, that's for sure, to accomplish your dream. What sort of things do I do to get inspired and in, in the right mindset of the role? I, I'm assuming that means on a nightly basis to kind of prepare myself for the role. Well, you know, all that sort of begins in the beginning with rehearsals and even before you get to rehearsals, you know, you do your, your work, your homework on the show and the, your backstory. Um, you know, with the Phantom, we have a novel that we can um, draw inspiration from and also the Phantom's backstory is all there for you. And then um, you can put your interpretation on it, so it becomes quite fun it's like a creative writing process as well and that's sort of your own personal homework so that kind of is your platform to start you know from day one and now to get me uh, to help me continue the run this far down the line you know just recently for me I would bring on an acting coach maybe six or eight for me it was 12 months into the run and when I decided to stay on so we we revisit all the backstory and all the notes that I made from before, I've sort of got a character bible, and like sometimes on a day if I'm t physically tired, that you don't want that to be uh, so much of a a wall as it. I'll just open those books at any point, and you just either reread some of your character's history that you came up with, or going into the scene, I'll carry my script around with me on some nights to kind of keep me uh, focused on the action that I'm trying to get across on stage and just keep taking those adject adjectives out and reminding myself and, you know, a little fill up of the inspirational tank.